the blade and give it to the kids. I'm Dan and I've been designing kitchen gadgets for 40 years. I'm gonna test some vegetable gadgets and see if I can find a way to make them better. We would want a larger gear, give that a little bit of a radius. The base is gonna come out here. These are the products I am going to test. Upright carrot peeler, rolling garlic chopper, full star vegetable chopper, rapid slicer, handheld spiralizer. Upright carrot peeler. Its purpose in life is to allow you to peel a carrot in one swift downward motion. Let's see how effective it is. It comes with a clamp to allow you to clamp it to the side of your counter. If I did that here, you won't be able to see what's going on. So I brought another table to put on this table. So let's clamp it so that it's snug onto the table. As you can see, there are some small curved blades here in three places, one on each side, and they're a little bit offset. So in theory, it's gonna peel all sides of the carrots as the carrot goes through. This device also comes with a plunger to keep pushing the carrot all the way through. I'm gonna start with a rather medium-sized carrot. So put it through the carrot hole, give it a push. I'm just gonna pull it down from the bottom. I think that would be easier than using the plunger. Boy, it peeled it pretty nicely except for the very tip. You still would have to go at this with a handheld peeler if you wanted to get the rest of that skin off. Let's try it with a slightly smaller carrot, and this time I'm going to employ the plunger. Let's see if I can use the plunger to keep my fingers further from the blade. And carrot on the floor. Again, it was quick. Again, it missed the very tip because the curvature of the blade is not gonna catch that. Let's see how it compares with a more common vegetable peeler. <music> In terms of effectiveness, I would give the upright carrot peeler a three. You still have some hand work to do. I'd say it peels 70, maybe 80% of the carrot. Now let's try the left-handed oil test. By making my non-dominant hand slippery, it's gonna quickly highlight areas for improvement. Since I'll be using my left hand, I switch sides for the table so I can get to it a little more easily. So tightening it with a slippery left hand, it's a little tricky. I could feel a whole lot of pressure points. Also, I've got to be a lot more careful to keep my fingers in place. This is just a simple wing nut. And boy, it's not feeling great. Left hand in the middle, I think it's lined up. It's peeling already. Because my left hand is slippery, I'm not going to be able to pull down on the tip of the carrot. Let's give it the plunge. And that worked. Again, I still have some handheld peeling to do. In terms of usability, I would rate this a two out of five. It may only make sense if you have a lot of carrots to peel. Let's give this a redesign. It's got a lot of parts, and it's got a lot of moving parts, which is always a little concerning. Either smaller parts that can break or just stop functioning correctly. A simple thing to do is the plunger, this little wing nut, is just a little too fussy and a little too painful. What I would opt for is the sort of clamp handle you see on like a, like a standard hardware C-clamp. Basically a metal shaft that you can spin 180 degrees and pull out if you interfere with the edge of the counter. The way these blades are arranged, because they're offset by the angle, it really does peel a reasonable size carrot 360 degrees. So that part is effective if your carrot is thick enough. The question is, how are we going to deal with the tip of the carrot? I think what I would consider is some way to peel the very tip of the carrot. If there was some way to create a peeler here, and we'd have to do that 360 degrees as well. So there may have to be two smaller mechanisms here. That means that when you push the tip of the carrot in, it's going to cover by peeling the tip of the carrot. I think that would be the improvement. Let's talk about the plunger itself, which comes in two pieces. It would make more sense to have this be a little bit of a funnel shape. It doesn't have to be stepped, because if it's a funnel shape, once you get down to the bottom, it's just gonna find itself. With these steps, it may just get hung up. In terms of a buy rating, I would give the upright carrot peeler a two out of five. If you're just looking to peel a couple of carrots, this probably isn't worthwhile. Rolling garlic chopper. It is designed to crush garlic as you roll it around the table. Let's see how effective it is. It actually has two little hatch doors here that can peel up, and they are really tight. And it comes with a separate tool to allow you to more easily scoop the garlic out. We have some garlic cloves here. They are already peeled. I think that's gonna be required for using this. Let's place it in, close up the top, and let's play with it. 
So far we have a complete garlic clove and it is not crushing or chopping it at all. That garlic clove is just jammed. The blades are not getting through and something is slipping. Give it another try. I'm gonna push down a little bit. Um, no, that's a letdown. I have not chopped this clove of garlic at all. Let's try another piece. You know, I'm gonna try a slightly smaller piece. Get a small piece of garlic. This may be chopping, but let's just keep going before I open it up. Okay, I feel like that should have been enough. Look like we have some fresh chopped garlic this time. It's not exactly crushed. Maybe I didn't go enough, but uh, I expected that that would have been done some more crushing. And so what I've got here are garlic chunks. Not as effective as I would have wanted. Not loving it. In terms of effectiveness on a one to five scale, I would give the rolling garlic chopper a one. It doesn't work well at all on larger cloves of garlic. And even on the smaller cloves, it wasn't crushing in the way that you would expect. So let's test its usability. And I'm gonna use my left hands. It is rather egg-like, so I'm a little concerned already that it's gonna be a little hard to handle. Man, I'm afraid of breaking a nail. Yeah, that took more effort than it should have. Stick it in there, close it up. And yeah, I could feel that the wheels are skidding, the blades are not spinning. Let's go back and forth a few times, maybe it's loosening up. It is at least starting to chop. Let's keep going a little bit, see if I can get it a little more fine. We've got chopped garlic, top and bottom. One of the problems with that scoop, the fork, is that it's clear and it's easy to lose, especially with a slippery left hand. It's just a little more out of control and needs a little more squeezing to keep it in control. But this is what I got. That clove of garlic turned into a pile of crushed garlic. The result is okay. It was the effort that is questionable. In terms of usability, I would give this a two out of five. I don't really think it was thought through as far as it could be. Okay, so let's see how I would redesign this. I think a big problem with this is the gear ratio is just all wrong. The blades are not chopping at all through larger cloves of garlic. So I think what I would experiment with is changing this ratio quite a bit. We would want a larger gear attached to the blades. That means as you're rolling the device around, you're getting a lot more cutting pressure on the blades. I would make these lips uh, not as tight, but also a lot more generous so that you can get a finger under there really easily. And as for the cleanup tool, you're gonna lose this instantly. I would probably make it big and green so that you can find it again. And probably with the logo or the name of the gadget on there, so that when you do find it in your drawer, you know what it is, you know where it goes. I guess the other thing I would do, because it was difficult to clean out the top, I would also make this two-sided so that there's a way to scoop out the garlic from both the bottom and the top. In terms of a buy rating on a one to five scale, I would give the rolling garlic chopper a one. It gives the promise that it's gonna work, but it's really a disappointment. Fun to play with. You can take out the blade and give it to the kids. Full star vegetable chopper. It is designed to chop many kinds of vegetables with one single push. Let's see how effective it is. Now, I'm going to start with an onion and I'm gonna use the smaller squares, the smaller grid, because I wanna dice the onion. And let's see how we do at dicing. This is coming down, I'm gonna give it a push. A bigger push. A bigger push. I hope it doesn't break. Whoa, I got through. Man, that took a lot of work. I've got the attachment with the larger squares. This is not gonna dice as finely as the first one, but let's give this a try. It may be easier to cut through. Okay, that wasn't nearly as difficult because again, we're not doing as much cutting, but we have much larger pieces that we're ending up with. I'm a little disappointed that the first one was as difficult as it was. So I'm gonna start again with the potato, with the smaller grid. Let's see if I come down and give it a squeeze, what I'm gonna end up with. And this is not that easy. Come on, potato. 
I think at this point, if I was in my kitchen, I would step on it. This is not wanting to go down easily. I wonder if there's a different technique for potato ejection. Oh, that worked the second time. But again, I had to use my full body weight to get it to happen. Let's see how the full star vegetable chopper compares to using just a boring old kitchen knife. I would give the full star vegetable chopper a two out of five. Its effectiveness really depends on the type of vegetable you're using. Some of them are easier than others. So now I'm gonna try the left-handed oil test. Let's see if making my left hand slippery is going to re reveal any more areas for improvement. I'm going to prepare an onion as I did before. I've got the smaller grid inserted again. It's a little more slippery with oil on my hands. I am now going to try to cut. Let's see if it's as difficult as it was before. I need some body weight. I feel like it's starting to cut. Man, I still need a whole lot of body weight on this to get through it. I'm going to try now sneaking up on it. Whoa, that's the trick. So it did it and it cut it into small diced pieces, but I'm not sure everyone would want to put that effort into it. So it felt like it was gonna break doing that. So in terms of usability, I would give this a two out of five. At best, it really takes a whole lot of work. You really need to give it a full body press in order to get that onion to dice. So let's talk about a redesign. This would be easier, of course, if you cut the vegetable into smaller pieces, like if you cut the onion into smaller pieces. Since I can't redesign the onions, I think I'll think about redesigning the device. What we really need on this is more leverage. And leverage is the function of the distance your hand is from the hinge I'm pressing down here. If I was twice as far away, it would take half as much effort. So I would take this handle and I would extend it as far as reasonably possible. So again, if this goes out twice as far, it's gonna take half as much effort. The base is somehow gonna come out to here. I think another thing I would experiment with is the shape of this blade. So this blade would actually be a little bit higher than the vertical blades. Like all the horizontal blades would be higher than the vertical blades. Would that help? I'm not sure, but it's worth an experiment. In terms of a buy rating, I would give this a three out of five. It's a good idea, it has some promise, but I'm not sure I want to body slam every vegetable I have in the kitchen. If you're not using it for vegetables, it could make a really nice fish tank. No, that's, that's, that's cruelty to animals. Rapid slicer. It is designed to allow you to cut a whole lot of cherry tomatoes with one horizontal slice. Let's see how effective it is. I've got a bowl full of pretty good looking cherry tomatoes. Let's start loading it up. I'll take some of each color. Okay, 18 cherry tomatoes. I'm gonna put the top on. I'm going to use a bread knife, a serrated knife, because I think that'll chop through uh, tomatoes a little more readily. I'm gonna put some pressure on my left hand and let's see what I get. I think that worked. Not bad. I thought that was pretty quick. If you're trying to get through a whole lot of tomatoes, I think you can get through them more quickly than doing one at a time by hand. Let's compare it to using just a normal bread knife. In terms of effectiveness, I'll give it a five out of five. It did what it promised to do, and it did it pretty well and pretty quickly. My thought is though, you may be able to do a hack just by using two plates that you already have in your kitchen, that could be worth a try. Time for the left-handed oil test. This is really a two-handed operation. Uh, because of the movement, and because really your left hand is operating a knife, we'll see if there's any left or right-handed bias. I'm gonna use the same number of tomatoes I had before, 18. I'm just gonna use my right hand to hold the tomatoes down so that they don't escape and go across. And there's really no pressure here. Um, any sort of slipperiness that's gonna show up is really based on the knife handle, uh, not the rapid slicer itself. And I think we're good to go. In terms of usability, I would give this a five out of five. I really don't think there are too many complaints here. Let's talk about a redesign. I would be concerned about these little crevices, the way this, these little fins come down. When you get a piece like this, these very tight corners can be hard to clean. And I would give that a little bit of a radius 
because it would be less likely for little bits of food to get stuck in there. Something else I would do, this works great for cherry tomatoes, but I think it could be a lot more versatile if the floor of this piece was adjustable. That way you could do larger tomatoes, you can do grapes. In terms of a buy rating, I would give the Rapid Slicer four and a half. They think there could have been just a couple of details that could have added some improvements. So Rapid Slicer, four and a half out of five. How do you feel about that? Happy! Handheld Spiralizer. It is designed to cut vegetables into thin spiral spaghetti-like strips. Let's see how effective it is. I'm gonna start with zucchini. I believe my role in life here is to squeeze this down and start spiraling. Boy, for some reason, I'm feeling it easier to spin the spiralizer than the zucchini. And there is a tube-shaped thing in the middle that is keeping the zucchini centered. It seems to be spiralizing. My hand is getting a little tired from spinning, but it is definitely spiralizing. Let's see if I can speed it up by spinning and pushing down at the same time. I'm definitely getting spaghetti out of it. And it's working, just be prepared to be in it for the long haul, it's taking a while. I feel like it's spinning unevenly now, somehow I think I got off center. Let's see, I may start using the cap right now. I don't really need it yet, it's still sticking out a bit. But I'll keep my fingers away from the blade by doing that. I think my technique here is gonna be hold the cap steady and spin only the body of the spiralizer. I think I just need to go soak my wrist in some Epsom salt or something because I'm a bit worn out. Let's say you don't have a handheld spiralizer. Let's compare it to a handheld julienne tool. You're not gonna get the crazy long spaghetti strands that we got with the spiralizer, but we'll get something relatively close. In terms of effectiveness, I would give the handheld spiralizer a three. The end result was fine. It just took a whole lot of effort to get there. Let's test its usability by oiling up. This really is a two-handed operation. I'll try to favor my left hand in doing the actions. And again, I've got about 40 degrees of range of motion, which means I'm going to have to twist this thing nine times before it goes a full circle. Definitely more difficult to spin this thing. I also notice when I pick up this cap, my hand's slippery. It's not that easy to pick up. So the end result is fine. It just took a lot, a lot, a lot of work to get there. In terms of usability, I would give this a one. The end product looks fine, but it took so much work to get there. I'm not sure you're gonna be willing to do it a second time. Okay, let's talk about a redesign. I don't see any way to avoid the fact that it's gonna take lots and lots and lots of spins and lots and lots and lots of time. I think this could use a little bit of shaping to it so that you don't have to do so much squeezing. I think I would give this a bit of a wave shape to it. Even with slippery hands, you'd be able to grab this without having to squeeze the hell out of it. I don't think this thing should be a fin at all. I think this should be a round piece on top. And instead of holding one hand steady, you can decide which hand wants to do the spinning because it would be easier to spin a round cap on this, like a mushroom size cap, a mushroom shaped cap coming up out of this. I think what I would add to the party here is I would make this blade with the blade part here. So it gives you the flexibility of going clockwise or counterclockwise with just the addition of one small piece. In terms of a buy rating, I would give the handheld spiralizer a two. I think the output is really nice, but I think you'll be in for a lot of work. Once again, there are some hits and misses, and the hits were also not as much of a hit as they could have been. The worst thing you could do with a product or a brand is overpromise. You really want to meet people's expectations. To design a great product, you really need to exceed those expectations. 